of your insistence in continuing your bombings in al Murli, Zumar and the Mosul Dam, despite our serious warnings. You, Obama, have yet again, through your actions, killed yet another American citizen. So just as your missiles continue to strike our people, our knife will continue to strike the necks of your people. Now, there are similarities, awful similarities, between this video and the one released two weeks ago of journalist James Foley being killed. I want to talk about that, focus on this. For that, we're going to turn to two terrorism experts, analyst Paul Cruikshank. Also joining us is former lead international kidnapping negotiator Chris Voss. Chris, I want to start with you here. What similarities do you see in the two videos? Thanks for having me on. And, yeah, let, let's, let's discuss this, this miscreant behind this mask. I mean, it elevates him to refer to him as an executioner. What he is, is, is he's a murderer who's hiding behind a mask. Now, there are, there are similarities here, and this is someone who's obviously needs to elevate his status by being on camera. And, let, and that's what this is. This is, a, this is a recruitment video. They're trying to aggrandize this individual and make him someone to be admired, and they're trying to attract other people to do the same thing. And what he is is a coward hiding behind a mask. Paul, I want to bring you in because we had Fareed Zakaria on, on New Day earlier this morning, and he said something that I found really interesting. Chris saying that this is a recruitment video. Fareed said, suggested that these beheadings and these videos are designed to goad U.S. and American forces into action. He also went on to say that Washington should proceed and respond in a manner and time and place of Washington's choosing when there's a real strategy in place. What do you make of that? Does it seem more like a recruitment video or a goading? Which, which side do you fall on? Well, I'm not absolutely sure that this is them goading the United States into more action. I think this is actually ISIS doing the minimum possible in order to satisfy the, the bloodlust of the, their supporters around the world to show that they're striking back against the United States for these uh, U.S. airstrikes uh, in Iraq and not doing something bigger in response, like, for example, a plot against the West, mm. which would definitely invite a, a, an overwhelming U.S. and Western uh, response. So I think this is actually as awful as it is, uh, quite a calibrated uh, response uh, from ISIS. You hit us, we hit you, uh, but they're not yet launching or plotting, it would appear, uh, an attack against the West. Chris, just like in the James Foley video, these people said they would kill Stephen Sotloff. In the Stephen Sotloff video, they are now threatening the life of a British hostage. I is there any chance, do you think, at this point, that that man's life will be spared? Well, uh, they're on a path, and they've probably already chosen that path. And, and Paul makes a good point. We're talking about who the intended audience is for the video. Now, there's a pretty good chance, uh, unfortunately, that this British uh, innocent person, that his fate has already been sealed. And ISIS is simply waiting to try to maximize, to get as much mileage as they can out of this publicity campaign of theirs. And the fact that they're engaging in publicity it's not really an either or. Is it, is it recruitment or is it trying to satisfy their followers or even goading? I think goading is third on their list and recruitment and satisfaction of the followers are primarily the objectives. And so unfortunately, more than likely, the, the risk level couldn't be higher for this British gentleman and, and it's probably already, it may have already happened. But, Paul, here's the thing. Uh, we know that there are other journalists and other hostages being held in the hands of rebels and in the hands of ISIS. Behind that, man, there are likely other people uh, whose lives are on the line. So how far does this go? We understand that the, the you know, NATO forces, the U.S., are working to try and figure out how to push back on ISIS. But in terms of, of these people, there have been several efforts made to rescue them, and they failed. They failed, and, and unfortunately now I think we can expect every couple of weeks uh, another one of these uh, terrible, uh, grisly murders, uh, executions uh, from ISIS. And the question is, you know, where do they escalate from here? And, and there's real concern. Uh, this is a group with real reach into countries like Jordan and Turkey and Lebanon, and there's some, some U.S. interests, U.S. facilities uh, in these countries. Could they try and strike next against uh, these type of targets? Real concern uh, that that may be next. Um, uh, here, unfortunately. Well, it's an appalling thought, but uh, we do appreciate you both joining us to talk about this video, talk about what might be to come, talk about what the United States and other nations might need to do to face this threat right now. So thanks to both of you, Paul Cruikshank, Chris Voss.